Nigerian lawmakers resumed plenary with a bang as they call for the sack of the service chiefs due to the rise in insecurity in the country. And the war between all progressive Congress National Chairman Adam Soshomole and Governor of Edo State, Godwin Abaseki, takes a new turn as the governor threatens to expel Oshomole from the party. This is Plus Politics, and I am Felicity Ezewike. You're welcome to the program. Senators have asked President Muhammadu Buhari to sack Nigeria's service chiefs over the growing insecurity in the country. In a similar vein, the House of Representatives also made the same call. The service chiefs have been accused of running out of ideas that tackle insecurity being faced by the country. But that's not all. The minority leader of the Senate, Enyin Nanya Abaribe, asked President Muhammad Buhari to resign immediately due to Buhari's inability to curtail the rising security challenges in the country. Will all the resignation and sacking solve anything? I have a guest with me to have a conversation on this, public affairs analyst, Mokta Muhammad. Thank you very much Thank for joining us. Thank you very much. Really pleasure, yeah. All right. Um, just before we get kickstart the conversation, let's take a look at the video at the plenary where Abaribe asked the president, his administration basically, to resign. Because we have to get to the root of this matter, I can only say one thing. Those who live by propaganda will die by propaganda. Mr. President, Nigeria did not elect the IG. We did not elect the chief of staff. We did not elect the joint chiefs. We did not elect the national security advisor. We elected the government of APC in 2015 and re-elected re them in 2019. The reason why we re-elected them was that they continued to tell us that because they had the key to security, and the whole Nigeria voted them in, in 2015, and I agree with that. And I'm saying, Mr. President, when you want to deal with a matter, you go to the head. So we will go to the government and ask this government to resign because they can no longer do anything in this country. <laughs> Mr. President, in conclusion, yes, Nigerians voted a government into power. And that government even said, if we don't perform, stone us. We are going with the stones to stone them now because they are no longer... You, you saw that display. Um, a lot of persons have been reacting to it. Um, it sort of overshadowed a little the earlier call uh, that the service chiefs uh, should resign. Why he supports that? He took a detour to ask that the government <laughs> resign. What's your reaction? I don't think um, about the government resigning. I don't think that will solve the problem. Remember, we voted in this government for four years. So if they resign, are we going to call for another election? I think constitutionally that can not work. We just have to wait for them. If you say the president resigned and then, then he's saying the vice president should take over, that's a different thing. And if you say the government, the whole government should resign, I don't think in our constitution it's ensure like other constitution of the world whereby we could have a, a, a an election in the middle of just another election because the, the ruling party or the president, the government decide to resign. I don't think we have that in our constitution. I think that is that is a way too far. Um, but when you look at the security challenges, you see the passion that they said so because um, initially you always think that the rich are always free, the political class are free from all the security challenges. They seems to be the target now and so I think that's why they are beginning to rise up to the occasion. And for the first time we saw the Senate coming together and this is not partisan any longer. It shows you how the decay we have gone in the area of security. For both of them, all, both houses of House of Representatives and the Senate um, coming together and saying that look, the service chief have to resign. Well, you could say it's always an indictment on the president because um, it's as good as saying the president, like he said, no Nigerian uh, uh, elected the service chief, no Nigerian elected the, uh, all of them, and 
no Nigerians. So it's more or less like telling the government indirectly that the president of the president has actually failed in the area of security. And um, you see, it, it, it's not something that is it's just starting. It's something that has been ongoing. And like he said, when we when he came in 2015, the main matter that this government was running was that they were going to defeat terrorism. They are going to bring Nigeria back to 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 where we used to be. It, it seems that, for the more, especially for the past one year or two years, the security challenges keep deteriorating, despite them saying that um, Boko Haram and bandits have been um, uh, totally eliminated from this country. Technically eliminated, let me use that word. <laughs> okay, um, you don't seem to agree with the blanket resignation of the government, but what do you say to the call for the service chiefs to resign, considering that first, They've served their mandatory years for, for the country, um, and they've also, um, their tenure has expired and has been extended and has expired again. So what's your take on that? I think the president have not done well in those areas. Look, in the military setup, when some said are supposed to retire, and you're not allowing them to retire, then you're not going to promote other said to come up. So what you're seeing is the stagnation, and that also can bring the morale of the military down because I'm due for promotion. I can't be promoted because somebody else that should have been retired is still there. So it brings the morale. The morale is already low. And like they said, it, I think the service chiefs have run out of ideas. And I think they need a fresh input of, 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 of people into that place. It's not about the service chief altogether, but they, once the system is, has a problem, the head has to pay the price for it because the box stop is stable. I think it's generally the security system that we, we operate in this country. There seems to not be synergy between the various security arms of government. Just of recent, we saw a video was playing around where the police were, were the one going after the Boko Haram element, and the military didn't know that it was the police, and they started shooting at the police vehicle. So that shows that there's, not, there's, there's no That's synergy crazy. between both security apparatus. There seems to be rivalry. They, they, they have to come, back, come together. In as much as I believe that um, terrorism or Boko Haram is, is, is a non-conventional war, and it, it, it's not a war that you can eliminate immediately, because more or less like the guerrilla warfare. You don't know who is Boko Haram. They can stay within you. They can stay with you. But we need to cut it on the board. We need to minimize it. As it stands now, it seems that every day, the security challenges keep getting worse. Not only with that now. We have kidnapping there. We have um, banditry also there. We have uh, the enhancement, the farmer crisis. It seems that the, the problem of overwhelm the current service chief. And I think that was no fast page where the president had a meeting with them today. And yeah. I, and I think well, well, the, the papers are reporting that it's a routine meeting as an update of what security... Uh, see, when it comes... It, it, yeah, they said... Um, there's a saying that if... if, if I've forgotten that saying that if, 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 so if the dog barked, in, is it the bag then one day, the following day, somebody died, you could just actually relate it to both of them. It's not, it's not coincident that it's, they're, they, having, they, a they're having the meeting. Now. But, but what do you think is stopping the service chiefs from resigning when the ovation, so to speak, is loudest? Because if, if this continues, the good works that they have done might be relegated to the background and their, their persistence in staying in office might be another issue entirely. Nigeria does not have the... There's no in their DNA to resign. We don't resign for lack of performance. We always seem to have a reason we think we could still do it because you see the challenge we have as a country is that people come to the place of leadership and wants to remain there. Nobody seems to plan after leadership, what do I do? So when it's time for you to retire, you begin to see them look for ways to extend their tenure because they, 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 they've not gone into the society. They don't think they will be of benefit without being in power. That's why you see somebody will be a governor, from a governor he wants to become a senator, and then he wants to sit in the Senate. You see somebody become the number two man in the country. Are you saying it is a clear case of power intoxicates? Well, you could say power intoxicated, then you could say lack of ideas, lack of vision. Their vision is just tied to want, just being in government. Because I, for the service chief to resign, it has never happened where we see the service chief resign in Nigeria. But like you said, there's always a tenure. So after your tenure, I don't see no reason why it, it, you could renew. It's, it's not unconstitutional for the president to renew the tenureship of, 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 well, of the service chief. Well, it has expired, and he hasn't yeah, said has anything. Yeah, it has expired, and he hasn't said anything. And then to add, to make matter worse, they are not performing. That's the challenge. If the service chiefs are performing, I'm sure Nigeria would have been saying, let, the, let them be extended so that they can fight the war. But now they are not even performing. 
and then they are yet being extended, and the morale of the military is down. There's a lot of uh, um, what we're hearing, the soldiers not being taken care of, some of them going into mutiny and other things. They need a fresh brunt of ideas. They need young people to come on stage and begin to turn around the security challenge. It's not rocket science to defeat Boko Haram. It's not rocket science to deal with kidnapping issues. It's not rocket science to deal with banditry. The president was saying some days ago that if we overcome the civil war, then he thinks we will overcome the, the current security challenges, which I agree. But then we need to look at what is the military like during the civil war and what is the military like now? Yeah, because there seem to be a resurgence. Let's, let's, let's take this conversation a bit away from what happened at the Senate. We'll get back to it again. But let's look at the response. Um, it was almost immediate. Garba Sheu issued a, a statement, and uh, he is describing uh, Abaribe's uh, outburst as foolish. And he's saying, um, he criticized him first and said he was an armchair critic and it does not represent uh, the opinion of a majority of Nigerians. So my question to you is, is he correct? He's not correct. <laughs> I believe he must have gone a little bit above but but he's saying the truth. You see, the way the, way the government always responds to things that doesn't favor them, is, it, 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 it beat my imagination. When it favors them, it's good. When it doesn't favor them, they seem to come out and say, look, let me give you, when this government came into power, I'm, I'm diverting from it, we see the Transparency International came in and said, oh, the report was fine at that time, and they were excited about it. But now that they are saying that, look, the indices is bad, and they are beginning to say, no, we don't even believe in Transparency International. So the government seems to want people to believe that they are doing very well. Now, before now, remember, Femi Adeshino came out and said that this, the security challenges now is not as bad as what was in 2015. Yeah, that was just days ago. Days ago. Yeah. And now the Senate is now saying that, look, the service chief should res resign because they agreed that the security challenges is getting out of hand. So what, what that tells you is that the president's um, spoke people just have to do their work so that we hear them, they are talking something. But in the reality, in the rea reality of reality, they know. But isn't that unfortunate? Because they are supposed to be speaking because we take what they say as a representation of the position of the government. So is there something flawed if we are now trying to separate a spokesman from the government itself? Because that seems to be card that is being played. Buhari is a saying to every other, every other person um, is a sinner. Is that narrative working for us when it comes to the issue of security? It's not working for us in any being, just not only security in every issue, it's not working for us. This government seems to be that they know it all. When it, see, I've said it in several forums. One thing, two things you don't play politics with. You don't play politics with your economy. You don't play politics with your securities. Because those are things that touch the life of everybody, whether, whether rich or poor, whether ordinary or, 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 or VIP. Those are the things that touch your life. So you don't play politics with them. You need to get it. You need to look for the right people to handle those areas. You, you become bipartisan in those areas. You begin to, you don't look at ethnicity in those areas. But when you look at the line of the service chiefs, the line of whoever is in, you seem to be a, a certain tilt towards a particular region, and which is not good. So you're not telling me no other region doesn't have an idea, they don't have anything to add to this. And coupled with the fact that despite all these, most of these challenges are even coming from the from the, from, from those states that the, that the service chiefs come from. Let me give you an instance. I like saying this. The time they have the Niger Data crisis, the then um, President Goodlord Jonathan was the vice president. He went to the creek. That's where the amnesty deal came. Because that is his area. He knew who to talk to. He knew when to go. As we're talking to Bruno State, is the state of the current chief of army staff, Burati. Burati is from, is from Bruno State. And even, he's even putting the military investing right in his, own, his, in his own village. And yet, there's still so much of security challenges in Bruno State and in the Northeast especially. So it's an indictment. The thing I say about the spoke people of the president, both Garaba Shewu and uh, Femi Additional, is that they just have to say something. No, we no, need no, to no, ask no. them. They don't have to say something every time. Reality is said, let me give you, uh, the, when the Christian Association of Nigeria came out 
to say that one their member was killed because government did not approach the issues like they used. Femi Additional came in and said that the Christian Association of Nigeria is behaving like an opposition party. You don't say that to people that are bereaved. That means you are not even sensitive to the pain that these people are going through. Okay, I'm um, still staying with that statement before we leave because you talked about um, um, certain aspect of uh, sentiment in uh, the matter. So I'm going to look at those. There is a statement in that uh, that Garba made that some persons are saying is either apt or a blow, a, a blow beneath, uh, below the belt that is irrelevant and trying to distract from the issue of the conversation. And what am I talking about? His accusation against Abaribe as being somebody who allows traitors and suspicious characters to get away in the case of Namdi Khan, whom he stood shorty for and was unable to produce. So in the light of the issue that is being discussed and a reference to Abaribe's role and Namdi, is it an apt response to deflate what this man is saying or is it something that shouldn't be? It's something that shouldn't be because that's a different thing all entirely. Remember that that's another, the, we have the judiciary, we have the legislation arm, and then we have the, the, the presidency. Those are the three arms, the executive arm of government. Those are the three arms of government. Um, when this bill was given to uh, Namdi Kali, it was given from the judiciary. And then if they have any objection at that time to see him as a traitor or whatever, they should have said it. And remember, MBRB never came out to support the, 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 the movement of Islam, the uh, IPO, he never came out to support them in any area. He was just looking for a way for supplying because at that time, not, the South East was becoming more volatile. There was tension in the air and they were looking for how to politically solve that situation. And he came in there to help the regime. That's what I see because it was an agreed thing for Nambi Kalu to be granted bill. At that time, the International Committee already were, uh, were, were already on Nigerian case because of the detention without trial of Nambi Kanu. Now, let's take it this way. After Abirabe gave the, the bill condition for him and he was, he was left, uh, he, he came out, who was in his place to make sure that Nambi Kanu does not leave the country? In their own eyes, he left the country. So who is to blame? That is the same thing. That's an indictment on the security apparatus. Because if somebody is a security risk, he needs to be watched. Okay, I, I want to refer you to, we'll still get back to some of the other issues uh, from the National Assembly, but I want to refer you to a recent update from the European Parliament um, of January 16, and what they, the observation that they made, that's what I want to um, mention. They're saying that there is no significant progress in the fight against Boko Haram and Islam terrorists. In its resolution of January 16, remarks that the security situation in Nigeria has deteriorated significantly with insurgents turning the Meiduguri, Damaturu and surrounding routes um, into dead zone. Uh, we also have the alarming global terrorism index of the Institute of Economic um, economics and peace, um, which ranked Nigeria as the third country with the highest level of terrorist activity in 2019. This is after Iran and Afghanistan. So if you take that and just oppose it with uh, the president's um, refusal to either sack the service chiefs or have them tender their resignation, what are our options if the president chooses to keep the service chiefs in spite of the outcry for them to leave? What possible scenario would we have? Unfortunately, we don't have any scenario. <laughs> the president is the most powerful person in the country, and he decides who who we, who we, who we uh, appoint and who to work with. So the only thing Nigerians can do, we can do what we keep doing. We keep talking. The Senate have joined majority of Nigerians to talk that the president needs to do something in the area of leadership, especially for the service chiefs. And we shouldn't forget that the service chiefs does not just involve, it involves both the police, both the, 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 the various, the Navy, the Air Force, the Army, all security apparatus. That is what they are saying. So we should not just narrow it not only to the war, in, uh, the war uh, with terrorists. We also have to look at the war we fight internally, also with security challenges that we have in between the kidnapping incident, the banditry incident, the, the cattle incident, I mean, enhancement, pharma crisis. 
All this is an indictment on the security apparatus. So what we need now, the police, remember even before the coming in of this new IG, it was almost like the other IG wanted an extension because he saw the president giving the service chief an extension, but that didn't play out well for him. So I think it's, it's right time we need to create a system. If we are going to be there, and the annoying thing about the service chief is that they are retired, they spend over 35 years in service, their age also is the age of retirement, they are over 60, they are spent over 35 years. Everything seems to be against Are we saying we don't have capable people in the military to take over any longer? Are we saying the Nigerian Defense Academy, the War College, the Institute of Training in, 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 in Zari, I mean in Jos, we don't have, we have not been able to train anybody to take place of leadership in the military. That is a big indictment on the system. Okay, let's go back to what played out at uh, the Senate. Um, uh, Senator Omar Gege, when the conversation still on security, they started talking about um, state police, having state police. That conversation came back again. But there was something he said that caught my attention. And he said that uh, the same state governors that are agitating for state police are the same ones that are unable to pay salaries of workers. And he also said something, um, if we create state police, we will go back to the Nigerian police and have the same challenges, if not worse. Because that's one suggestion to salvage the security situation in this country. Does he have a point there? I'm not in support of state police. I what, why, why we're, do you... we're not right for state police. Because everything seems to be political. It will be state police, even look, just look at it, even the federal police that the government, the governors should ordinarily should not have control over. They still have control over them in trying to deal with their, with this, their opponent, the opposition. So you could imagine a situation whereby you have a state police. It will be used to the advantage. Of a, we, as a country, we are not right for that. I personally feel we are not right for that yet. You need to see even Togri when we come to politics. So most of the people that will find their way into the state police will be people that have been working with the political class, I can assure you. People that have not been trained. It's not just being, being a security outfit or becoming like a police or the military. It's not just something you just wake up a day and give everybody arm to be. They must be trained. Let, let me tell you, I said this scenario. Those days, the military was a pride profession because people go into the military for the sake that they want to serve the nation. Now, majority of the people that go to the military, they go to the military by accident because they are looking for a job. So military is a, is, is a profession that you, have the, you need to have the passion. So as it stands now, if we are talking about state police, like Omar Gege said, we've not even been able to pay salaries. So how much is going to be the salaries? How are, they, how are we going to find funding for them to be equipped? How more that material will they come? How will this mat material come in knowing fully whether security is an exclusive right of the federal government? All right, uh, before I let you go, I'm told we're done with time for this segment. Um, if you were to see the president right now, what would you say to him as regards the situation with the service chiefs? I'll tell him to sack them, point blank, and I'll tell him to get somebody else to come in. Within the military, the morale is low. He needs to bring the morale high. He needs to serve the service chiefs. He needs them to go with, with their colleagues and bring in fresh ideas with fresh people. Okay. There will be an end to the insurgency. Thank you very much for your thoughts so far. Thank you. All right, we will go for a short break now. And when we return, the update on the rift between the two elephants in a dose stage is up next for discussion. Stay with us. <laughs> 